In tropical waters at depths to 120 feet, the stony coral polyps have created thousands of square miles of unique environment. Some of the animals which inhabit the coral reef are directly related to the coral itself. Others are animals of the sea which have adapted themselves to this habitat and are dependent upon it for survival. Some are relatively immobile. Some can move slowly or rapidly. Some are free swimmers. The spiny lobster found in Bermuda waters lacks the pincer claws of its northern cousin, but has long sturdy antennae which can be used to repel enemies. Lobsters are mainly night feeders and usually spend the daylight hours hidden in a crevice with antennae and eyes alert for danger or possible food. Like other crustaceans, they can regenerate lost parts through successive molts, and this ability often helps them escape predators by leaving behind the captured appendage. The octopus has been credited with all kinds of evils in our literature and drama. But it's really a very timid creature. It moves about the reef by crawling on its tentacles, or by a form of primitive jet propulsion, achieved by squirting water from its mantle cavity through a movable funnel under its head. It's a close relative of the squid. It can change color and pattern quite rapidly to camouflage itself against the bottom or among the vegetation of the reef. What's more, it's edible. Its eight arms are equipped with sucking discs under the underside, with which it can grasp its small prey. This is Cassiopeia, a jellyfish and a bottom dweller. Related to the corals and the anemones, it's equipped like them with potent stinging cells concentrated in its mass of appendages above the umbrella-like body. The moon jelly is freer swimming than Cassiopeia, but it too uses stinging cells for protection and capture of food. These stingers are not dangerous to man. But the jellyfish Pelagia, which floats on the surface with tentacles trailing beneath it, has much more potent stinging cells. They fringe the umbrella and oral arms as well as the tentacles. The Portuguese man-of-war jellyfish is particularly dangerous to swimmers because its tentacles are almost invisible and with mature individuals can be extended 50 or more feet from the floating body. The float is one polyp and the tentacles, feeding and reproductive parts, are other polyps, making the man-of-war a colonial organism. In general, few of the animals of the reef are dangerous the better known members of the reef community are the colorful tropical fish, like this Sergeant Major. The brown moray eel is a biter and has a reputation for viciousness, but there is little evidence of the moray making unprovoked attacks on human swimmers. Snake eels, related to the morays, are also biters. They are fish, 
not the animals known as sea snakes, which are true reptiles. One of the species which are bottom feeders and in this way help to keep the reef clean is the goatfish. The goby is another bottom dweller. It belongs to one of the largest fish families with nearly 500 species in it, but is one of the smallest fishes on the reef. It's carnivorous and well camouflaged. The lizard fish has a head like a reptile and a large mouth. It will partially bury itself in the sandy bottom and dart quickly upward to capture its prey, usually small fishes. A familiar bottom dweller on the reef formed sands is the peacock flounder. The trumpet fish stands on its head among the soft corals to make itself inconspicuous. It feeds on small fish and shrimp. The large eyes of the squirrel fish identify it as a night feeder, its food mainly crustaceans. Another carnivorous fish is the mutton hamlet, one of the grouper family. Some groupers grow to several hundred pounds in weight. The mutton hamlet never grows more than a foot long. Quite common on the reef are the sea chubs or rudder fishes. They are plant feeders and will often swim to the surface to feed on the floating sargassum weed. In the sargassum weed, they might encounter one of the strangest looking fishes on the reef, the sargassum fish. A member of the frogfish family, this animal is highly modified to match the color and pattern of the plant in which it lives. It feeds on other small animals of the sargassum community, crustaceans, fish, and worms. One of the most spectacular sights on the reef is the large schools of small fish species collectively called fry. They could be schools of herring or silver sides or anchovies. They feed on small planktonic organisms in the water. And of course, they are food for larger fish. One of these predators is the senate, which also forms large schools and is very voracious, even though it rarely grows bigger than 18 inches. The senate is a small species of barracuda. The great barracuda occurs in all tropical seas except the eastern Pacific, and often cruises along the reef in search of easy prey. This fish, which may grow to five feet long, and as heavy as 100 pounds, has been known to attack swimmers. But these attacks usually occur in murky waters where the fish strike instinctively at moving objects not clearly seen. In clear water, they seldom, if ever, attack unless provoked, as when wounded by spear fishermen. diversified groups of reef fishes is the wrasse family. These are young male bluehead wrasse and females. Only mature males have the blue coloration. All wrasse are carnivorous. A larger wrasse is the slippery dick, very common on the reef. When handled, it secretes a slimy substance, hence the name. Larger still is the hogfish, also a wrasse, and capable of growth up to 15 pounds. 
The trunk fish, or box fish, as its name implies, possesses a hard outer covering which grows with the fish. It's a good swimmer in spite of the fact that only its tail and fins are movable. Another inhabitant of the warm reef waters is the band-tailed puffer, a fish which inflates itself like a balloon as a defense against attack. This inflation erects protective spines all over its body. Damsel fishes, here represented by the boldly striped sergeant majors, are common on the reef. They are small, colorful, and protect their territory aggressively. This is another damselfish, the Bow Gregory. The yellow-tailed damselfish is a relatively large member of the family, which grows to about seven inches. With abundant cover on the reef, tropical fishes can afford to flaunt their colors in the face of predators. Here it's the predators which often adopt camouflage. When young, like this one, the yellow tail has no yellow on it and is often called the jewel fish. Common, too, are the grunts, so named because they produce a grunting sound. This is the yellow, or French grunt. Angel fishes are probably the most colorful and best known of the reef fishes. Their main food is sponges. The blue angelfish is very numerous in the Bermuda waters. Much less common, almost secretive, is the rock beauty, possibly the most beautiful of all the fishes on the reef. The beauty of the coral reef is fragile, easily destroyed. Once the precarious balance is upset, this whole exquisite environment can become barren and sterile. Divers today have learned to disturb as little as possible to leave things as they were found.